Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, history. I've got a bunch of historical novels from the attic to go through with you. So there aren't actually very many books in my unread history box. Um, I seem to have most of the historical fiction I've got on Kindle rather than uh, rather than in paper copies. So I've got 15 books to go through with you. So this won't be a very long video. Um, and part of the reason I think I tend to have them on my Kindle rather than physical books is a lot of them are huge. <laughs> so some of the books I've got here are ridiculously big. Um, and I think it's fair to say as well, some of them I will almost certainly never read so I probably need to unhaul them anyway let's go through them so I don't read an awful lot of um, historical fiction but when I do read it I do enjoy it I think it tends to be for me historical fiction tends to be that kind of fiction that just throws everything together so you often get in historical fiction you know a bit of adventure a bit of romance a bit of kind of social commentary and things like that and I really like books that put all of that stuff together um, right so anyway let's go through this so first of all I've got a box set I'll show you the box first I've taken the books out of the box so I didn't fumble with them amateurishly when I was um, when I was recording so this is the, a uh, box set of the Poldark novels by Winston Graham. So um, a tie-in with the 1970s TV show. So more recently, um, Poldark has been refilmed by the BBC and is on TV. Um, well, not on right this minute, but um, the, the series is ongoing at the moment and my wife and I are watching it and it is a lot of fun. But I do like the 70s-ness of this uh, box set. And the books within have similarly 70s covers. So there are six books here. I'm not 100% sure if this is the entire Poldark um, series of books or not. So these were originally written, I think, in the 40s and 50s. Um, and they're set in... So if you don't know about them, they're set in... Cornwall in what the 1600s? I know 1780s. Um, so set in Cornwall about this guy Ross Poldark who comes back from fighting in the um, in the Revolutionary War in the States um, and is like a mine owner and it's about the various kind of noble families. But but Ross is like a a good one in terms of you know looking out for the for the common folk and things like that and he ends up being an MP and stuff. So the the, the series definitely. Um, is really good fun. Whether the books are as entertaining or not, uh, I will find out if I ever read them. Uh, but these are in pretty nice condition, given that they are from the late 70s. Yes, this is from 1977. Um, but yeah, they're still in pretty good nick. So what's that? That's pretty old, isn't it? What's that? 45 years old. Nearly as old as me. So anyway, this is the first one, which is Ross Poldark. Um, then we've got the second one, Demelza. So Demelza is... Um, Ross's uh, wife, or becomes Ross's wife. The third one, which is Jeremy Poldark. The fourth one, which is War Leggan. So War Leggan is the name of one of the mines that uh, Ross Poldark owns. The fifth one, which is the Black Moon. And the sixth one, which is the Four Swans. He looks rather alarmed, doesn't he? The chap on the cover there. I'm not sure who that is. Um, what was it? Um, anyway, right. I've got another few books from a series here. So these are um, from the Albury Maturin series by Patrick O'Brien. So I read um, the first of these, Master and Commander, a little while ago and talked about it. This book is absolutely filthy. I need to watch one of those videos that tells you how to clean books. And I need to clean this book because it's absolutely disgusting. I think I've got most of these on my Kindle as well. So I may unhaul these at some point. Anyway, this is HMS Surprise. And if you've not read these, these are wonderful kind of naval adventures. Um, really beautifully done. Um, this one is The Far Side of the World. So this is like a really old library edition oh look so in my library video the other day my sunday bollocks video about libraries i talked about the fact that library books used to have these little tickets in and when you borrowed the book they would take the ticket out and put it in your little green library folder so this is the ticket for this book um so when was this this looks to be a first edition um, so this is from 1984 so i don't know if that i don't know if that means it's worth anything or not so the far side of the world i think was I think was the one that the movie of Master and Commander was based on, rather than being based on the first book. Um, and this is Desolation Island. So this is another very old one, also from um, 
West Sussex Libraries, also with a little ticket inside it. Um, this is also appears to be a first edition from 1978. So even if I have got these on my Kindle, I may have got them because they're rather nice. Um, right, next up, now this is definitely a monster. So this is The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel, which is, how long is this damn thing? Nearly 900 pages long. So given that I DNF'd, very happily DNF'd, um, Wolf Hall, because I just thought it was boring. Um, I'm definitely not going to read this. So I bought this. I've got the first two books. Um, I got them secondhand, um, so they were cheap. And then because I had the first two, I and was go knew I was going to read Wolf Hall. Foolishly, before starting to read Wolf Hall, I bought this one. But it was it was really cheap on Amazon for some reason. It was like three quid or something like that. Um, so yes, I, I'm pretty confident I'll never read this. And I know there are many people who love these books, but I, I got about 100 pages into... Well, no, maybe not even 100, about 60 pages, I think, into Wolf Hall. And I just was not enjoying it at all. So anyway, that's a, that will free up a bit of space in the attic when I get rid of that. Um, another whopper... Um, so this is World Without End by Ken Follett, which is, is this the second book in the Kingsbridge saga? I'm not sure. It doesn't actually say. Um, I think it is. I think it's the sequel to uh, Pillars of the Earth, um, which I've tried to read a couple of times and never managed to. Oh, it's definitely set in Kingsbridge because there's maps of Kingsbridge inside it. So this is, this is huge. This is nearly 1,300 pages. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I I do I do really want to read um, the first one and and then this one as well. What's the first one called again? Pillars of the Earth. I did just say it. So yeah, as I say, I've tried to read it a couple of times and and I failed to. I really enjoyed the TV miniseries um, of it, which was out a few years ago. Um, and I really like. I've read a number of Ken Follett books, but all like shorter ones. Uh, his kind of thrillers and World War Two books and things like that. All of which I've really enjoyed. Um, so I I will try these again at some point. Uh, right, that's the series done, I think. Oh no, hold on, I've got another Ken Follow one. Oh, I've got The Pillars of the Earth as well. I've definitely got this on my Kindle too. <laughs> uh, so this is, this is over a thousand pages. Um, so yeah, I should, I should try this again at some point. Um, right, next up. So this is a completely random charity shop find that I bought a few years ago, which sounds really good. It's called The Strange Affair of Spring Hill Jack. Uh, by Mark Hodder. Um, it's got a nice blurb on the front from Michael Moorcock, the best debut novel I've read in ages. Um, and people will know I do uh, I do like Michael Moorcock. There's a much longer blurb on the back from Michael Moorcock as well. Um, but this does sound really interesting. I should keep this down and read it. So let me read you the back because it sounds like a fascinating book. Um, it is 1861 um, and Albertian Britain is in the grip of conflicting... Forces. Sorry, the font they've used is really weird. I couldn't read that word at all. Um, oh, I think some of the words are deliberately misspelt. Oh, I don't know. It's jolly confusing. I don't know if you can see that last word there. But that is, I think, supposed to say forces. But it looks like it says forex. Anyway. Um, engineers transform the landscape with bigger, faster, noisier and dirty technological wonders. Eugenicists develop specialist animals to provide unpaid labour. Libertines oppose restrictive and unjust laws and flood the country with propaganda, demanding a society based on beauty and cre creativity, while the rakes push the boundaries of human behaviour to the limits with magic, sexuality, drugs and anarchy. Uh, returning from his failed expedition to find the source of the, source of the Nile, explorer, linguist, scholar and swordsman Sir Richard Francis Burton finds himself sucked into the perilous depths of, his moral and ethical of this moral and ethical vacuum when the Prime Minister, Lord Palmerston, employs him as King Spy, his first mission to investigate the sexual assaults committed by a weird apparition known as spring Jack, to find out why chimney sweets are being kidnapped by half man, half dog creatures, and to discover the whereabouts of his badly injured friend, John Hanning Speak. That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? That sounds really entertaining. So, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have put it in historical because it's clearly sort of all history. But, yeah, that does look really good. Um, okay, right. Next up then is The Gargoyle by Andrew Davidson. So, I got this ages ago, like 10 years ago, probably. Um, at a book sale at my work. It's a really nice edition. I do like, as I've said, on, uh, as, as I've said before... I don't know that. Thank you, Alexa. That was helpful. Um, as I've said before, I do like um, 
books with coloured page edges. Um, so yeah, this is I, I have heard people talk about this one, um, and it is supposed to be very good. It's got a much shorter blurb, so I will read it. A young man is fighting for his life. Into his room walks a bewitching woman who believes she can save him. Their journey will have you believing in the impossible. Um, so yeah, I think that's supposed to be quite good. And it's a nice book, a nice looking book. Um, and then finally, um, we have one which I think my mum lent me, which she raved about, um, which, <laughs> which has been mouldering in the attic so sorry mum I haven't read it yet um A Gentleman in Moscow by Moscow even by Amor Towles um which again is a book that I've heard lots of people talk about which is supposed to be very good so that was a quick whiz through some historical books from my library um do let me know if you've read any of these um particularly if there's any you think I should you know definitely read and especially if you've read this one because I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about this book but it sounds great um so yeah that was that um as always hope you're all safe and well hope you're really good stuff and I will speak to you again very soon cheerio Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Thing? <laughs>